Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Rando Geek. We have an update regarding AT&T's massive hack. We did an original video about this last week, giving you guys an update as to what was going on. We have some additional news that we can provide to you regarding the story here. Link for the article down below for you in the description. Now, for those of you that are not aware about it, AT&T suffered a massive hack 2024 back in April. Looks like bad actors were able to get their hands on more than half the AT&T customers, almost all AT&T customers' phone numbers and names. So the severity of the situation is, is real. And it's real because the fact that these hackers were able to get their hands on the phone numbers and names of almost every AT&T customer. Now, AT&T has said that that's all the information they have. They were not able to get social security numbers, date of births, addresses, banking, or credit card information that we know of. But we know that there's ways to get that information if you have a customer's name, if you have their phone number, their sites, that if you plug in their phone number, you can do a reverse lookup and you can get contact information such as addresses, maybe banking information, and more. Of course, it's not that easy, but it can be done. And that is the concern here, that these hackers were able to get their hands on almost all of AT&T's customers' phone numbers. It's very severe, this is a very big hack, and of course it's very concerning. So concerning that, you know, the FCC says they're gonna launch a private investigation, which I think is completely necessary. When these types of hacks happen, you gotta do this. You, you know, once, maybe you, you know, you wanna like kinda raise a, a red flag a little bit, but you don't have to go all in immediately but if this continuously keeps happening, you got to do something about it. And this is not the first time that this has happened with AT&T recently. These things just kind of keep happening. There's been a lot of drama in the world of AT&T. But anyway, an update here. It turns out that AT&T has reportedly paid the hacker $370,000 to delete the data and provide video proof of, delete, of the deletion. So they're saying that reports are showing that this debt was paid in May. Uh, was paid through cryptocurrency, where the uh, you know bad actors were able to get their hands on the money, and then it was laundered through a bunch of different accounts. We're told, but a video was uh, you know apparently sent to AT and T. So we know that the threat was real; that these hackers really did have this information. And apparently, the hacker reportedly wanted one million from AT and T, but eventually settled for a fraction. Now, that's what I was thinking, like, why wouldn't you apparently have almost every customer's phone number? Why would you only ask for something so small as the $370,000? So the amount is $1 million. I think the, you know, the hacker just wanted to basically get in and get out kind of thing before it gets too hot, before maybe they're traceable. So they're thinking, well, you know, we'll take what we can get. This is a good amount of money, and we can just kind of bow out and, and hide away without, you know, risking you know, having this thing linger on and we can get into, you know, some serious trouble if we're caught, right? So maybe that's what it's about. So that's our update here, though. But, I, you know, of course, AT&T says that they're working with law enforcement, et cetera, et cetera. We talked about that as well. Uh, the severity of this is, is it's very harsh, even though it's just phone numbers. Again, there's ways to utilize those phone numbers to trace back to customers, maybe very high profile customers. Uh, there was apparently, you know, leaked text as well. So with those phone numbers, they were able to to kind of get text messages, although AT&T says that they were not able to see what was written in those messages. I, I'm not too sure about that. I don't know if AT&T really wants to discuss how bad it was. They may be trying to keep it on a DL, but of course it's being investigated. So all this will come out uh, eventually, we'll find out just how severe it really is. Sometimes they try to, you know, put the uh, flame out before it gets too big, before the public eye gets their hands on it, and then the story just, you know, they don't want their customers panicking. They don't want a high churn. They don't want customers, you know, running to T-Mobile or Verizon over this, which is probably happening anyway, and then vice versa, right? When T-Mobile gets hacked every other quarter, they run into AT&T or Verizon. So, there's really no safe place. This is kind of the risk that we take when we do businesses with these companies. But as I've said before, 
something's got to be done. The FCC's definitely got to step in and hold these companies accountable, and they got to put them on notice. Uh, because again, it does happen. No company is safe. This is apparently, you know, AT&T is apparently, according to this source here, uh, which is PC Mag, they're saying is one of more than 150 companies whose data was stolen during April and May through poorly secured Snowflake accounts. So we're not, you know, apparently on that list is Ticketmaster, Advanced Auto Parts, Lending Tree, and Santander Bank. Imagine that a bank holding millions, trillions of dollars okay, of customers' money, hard-earned money. Who knows what kind of high-profile customers have accounts at Santander. As we know, high-profile customers split their money up into multiple banks. So it's not just AT&T we're, we're bagging on here. We bag on any company that continuously suffers these types of hacks and data breaches because, you know, customers are the ones that are going to feel it in the end. When our information is on a dark web and we're the ones, you know, having to fight off credit bureaus for mistakes that were made by other companies or other people, you know, it's not pretty, it's not fun. And nobody really has time for that. Right. I think you and I can both agree. We don't have time to sit around and argue with credit bureaus over mistakes that are not even ours. So that's the concern here. Um, again, it happens. These things happen, but they need to be held accountable and they need to do their very best to come up with solutions to kind of prevent these things or they may be forced to stop asking consumers for certain personal information. Now, I know, well, you could say, well, you can't just, you know, give a phone, you know, give a loan to somebody without checking their credit. No, you can't. But, you know, maybe only those customers are the ones that you ask for, like a social. If I'm just getting a postpaid account, um, you know, maybe you do a soft inquiry on my credit, make sure it's legit. But then that's it. You delete my information from the system and you provide proof that it's it's removed. There's got to be something. Otherwise, you got to do a better job at keeping that info safe. As always, I want to thank you guys for stopping by and watching. And we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.